Frostbite Studios, uh, checking out Rend. I would love to turn the camera, have you guys see what I see, but I can't do that right now. Uh, it's in a beta stage, and, or alpha, beta? Alpha, pre-alpha. Pre-alpha, so very early stages, but actually it looks beautiful. Um, it's in that screen and that screen, but again, I can't show it to you. But uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Dave go ahead and uh, talk to you a little bit about it. All right, hi, I'm Dave with Frostkeep Studios. Uh, we're working on Rend, our first game. It's a multiplayer sandbox survival game, uh, kind of in the vein of, of Ark or Rust or any of the other kind of popular games out there right now. Um, and yeah. Sweet, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for having me out here. Um, so while we've been talking, and even when I came in, I've been watching this. You know, you're just standing out, you know, in the field and some more looking creatures just walking around, really peaceful. Yep. And I know that can change just like that. <laughs> um, I was doing a lot of, uh, you know, watching the other videos and everything, and everything seems very dynamic. Um, I don't know if you want to go into something about the environment, about the, the creatures. Sure. Uh, so we're, we're kind of like a, a, a mixed PvE, PvP game. So there's all kinds of creatures out in the world. Uh, we have 11 different biomes that you can visit. Uh, every faction starts off in a kind of safe hills uh, area. Um, our, our full map uh, kind of looks like a triangle, and there are three different factions. Each faction kind of starts as far away from each other as they can get uh, to kind of give new players a safe space to work with, I guess. Um, but the first, first, first biome you start in is this hills biome, which kind of has really simple little uh, uh, pig creatures that you can run out and kill that won't necessarily fight back. Um, but you can also venture out further into, uh, we have kind of like forest area, we have a highlands area, we have a, you know, a, a swampy area, a fungus area. And the further you get from your kind of safe faction base, uh, the more dangerous things get. Right. Um, and so there's kind of specialized creatures in each of those areas that, you know, are, are unique to each biome. Um, and like I said, the creatures get kind of nasty when you get into the further out biomes. Uh, yeah. So the, the and thanks. And so <laughs> the graphics are beautiful. Um, and so from what I from what I remember, you were mentioning their biomes. They're like three floating kind of islands, kind of worlds. Uh, well, the whole thing is floating. They're all connected. Okay. So each of the factions areas is is connected on this kind of giant floating platform up in the sky. I guess it's 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 kind of representing one of the realms, one of the realms from old Norse lore. Um, and the tree in the center is this kind of giant, uh, iconic uh, uh, tree that, that represents Yggdrasil. Um, and so it, it, each, each, each faction area is also kind of, I guess, copy-pasted. So each faction is identical, like all the areas around them are identical. So you go to one faction, you'll have the same hills and forests. Uh, you go to another, another faction, they'll have the exact same hills and forests. The only difference is they're different players, they're your enemies. Okay. Um, so yeah. So that you can fully customize your characters, and you, you can build up bases? Yep, absolutely. Uh, one of the primary things you do is uh, this, this faction base that you can't see, but he can, uh, has kind of fortifications built around it, but when uh, players actually start on the server, when a server starts up, this is completely gone, this is barren. There's nothing here except for this center tree, uh, and, and it's your job to kind of venture out in the world, gather resources, uh, craft things that allow you to build these walls, that allow you to build these kind of buildings that are around your faction base that will have crafting tables in them that allow you to craft even more advanced things. Um, and you can actually craft, or you can build anywhere out in the world. So outside of, uh, there's a shield that I'll show you. So there's this kind of box shield that's around your faction base that only you and your faction members can move in and out of. Uh, and this is kind of our main protection for new players. Um, enemy players can't get in this. They can't shoot through this. Uh, creatures can't, you know, attack you through this. Um, but you can venture outside of it, and that's where you can start. You can also build buildings, you know, up on up on hills, out in the forests, uh, and that's where other players will come and, uh, you know, attack your your, you know, unsafe spaces out there. I guess. Cool. Um, so from from what I read, you get to build up and do as much as you want at the end of the week. If that's what I if I read it right, yep. at the end of the week. 
guys battle it out. Yep. So we have uh, scheduled events. We call it the Reckoning. Um, every single server has a particular time when the Reckoning happens, and it'll be you know once or twice a week uh, at a particular time. When you pick your server, it'll show you like the Reckoning is going to happen at these times. So you'll know ahead of time before you join a server. Uh, but at that time, the shield actually disappears, like it falls. And at that point, we spawn a bunch of kind of nasty AI monsters outside your base that'll come and attack that you have to take care of. Uh, but at the same time, after that, there's a period of time where the shield stays down. Like, it doesn't immediately go back up. So that's when other players can come and attack your faction base. Uh, and kind of, there's, a, there's another mechanic we can talk about later, but uh, players kind of want to do that. Like, we, we want to encourage players to fight each other. Okay. Whereas in other survival games, you know, you spend a lot of time building up a base, gathering resources. You don't necessarily want to make anybody angry and start fights. Right. Like, we're, we're putting a big focus on getting players to clash. So, before that week ends, before that day of reckoning, outside of the shield, can you and an enemy player interact? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. You can, you know, shoot each other. You okay. can kill him. You can loot him. Uh, you can talk to each other if you want. You can cooperate. You know, if you're if you're on a particularly weak faction and he's on a weak faction, you can kind of team up and go attack the That's strong the faction. faction. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's pretty cool. Yep. So, I mean, and that's, I mean, I try to read a lot about it, and we've kind of covered it, what, in seven minutes or yep. five minutes, uh, whatever it may be. Um, is there anything I'm missing? Because it just seems like a huge world. Uh, the Reckoning is pretty awesome. And, well, I, actually, when the Reckoning's over, I think you kind of covered that a little tiny bit. But the Reckoning's over, the week starts again. Yep. Flatland, essentially. No, uh, so that's actually a totally different thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, when the Reckoning's over, actually, the shield just goes back up and you kind of go on oh, okay. and progress further. So we actually have uh, longer ser server cycles. Um, so over the course of a server's life, you'll go through, uh, I don't know the exact number, it's like 10 or 15 Reckonings. Okay. Um, and throughout this time, you're out there harvesting resources, crafting, doing things. You'll be collecting, uh, we call them spirits. Right? I think, uh, and you need to take these spirits and you kind of have them on your person. So like if you harvest a tree, a spirit might pop out and you collect it. Uh, you want to take that back to your faction tree and deposit it. Okay. Uh, and we actually have a, yeah, so we have a progress bar that's on the giant tree in the center. Oh, that's cool. So okay. every time you deposit souls, that'll tick up and up. And when a faction gets to the very top, they essentially win. Uh, so they ascend to Valhalla. Um, and then shortly after that, the server will reset, and that's when everything gets level. Um, so the whole point, obviously, as you're playing through on a server, is to collect those spirits, uh, fill that bar up, and then players are going to be fighting over them. So if a, if a player is running around in the world carrying a bundle of spirits, another player can come up and kill him and steal those spirits. Uh, at the same time, during a reckoning, uh, your enemy factions want to come poke holes in your faction base, and they can attack your tree, like your faction tree. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, and souls will pop out of that, and they can take them. So if a wow. faction is way ahead of everybody else, the other two factions, like I said, can cooperate, That's come in, knock all your souls out, and then suddenly you're on the bottom. That's an awesome strategy. Yeah, and I wish you guys could see this tree. It looks beautiful. And we have screenshots of it. And I may put them over as we're talking, because I know you guys want to look at me all the time, you know, and, and him too, but I might throw in some pictures. But, um, so yeah, it's a beautiful looking tree, and uh, so the person that is standing right here, I guess she's a new player, she's in her underwear well, I just right died. now. <laughs> yeah, so just respawn, she's in her underwear, oh, I think I just and she disappeared, up. but that's okay. Um, but when I walked in originally, there was a guy uh, who seemed like he was dressed, and I think he had some weapons, but then he died, he got dehydrated. Oh, yeah. And then uh, now we have Sinead O'Connor, <laughs> or we had, and now she has hair. But anyway, um, but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else I'm missing. We've covered, you know, a lot. Oh. I'm sure you guys have come up with a ton more stuff. I mean, in a short amount of time, it's hard to cover everything, but we have a, a very ex 
extensive crafting system. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff that you can craft and it's very, uh, it's tiered. There's a, a progression to it. So you kind of have to craft, you know, the easy stuff and then you can progress into the uh, harder things. Um, for example, like bows, you might start off at like a, a, a tier one bow and craft all the way through a tier five bow. Um, and there's a long, long list of, of things in between there. Um, and uh, I think we went over the building system. It's a pretty comprehensive building system. We have uh, capture points out in the world um, to kind of give players a focal point. To, so it's a, it's a point that basically a, a faction can run up to and capture. Okay. And it'll, you know, turn it into their faction. Okay, so that's Switch another, it over to their faction. Yep. battle. Yep. And okay. uh, capture points will give uh, buffs or certain benefits to the factions. Um, and so players want to keep those, right? Uh, players want to protect them, so they'll build fortifications around them. They'll put defenses on those fortifications. Uh, and other factions will obviously want to come and take those, right? So you brought up a, a good, uh, well, a good segue kind of into another question. You mentioned buffs. Now, when this game is released, first off, is this something I, I can buy or it'll be a free download? Uh, It'll be a box product. Okay. Pretty sure. Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. Is that will the game be sold, or will you get it free? Okay. Yeah. And then so there's no monthly fee. Nope. Awesome. Monthly fee. So then now back to the buff part. Yep. If let's say right when I start playing the game, I want to be an expert immediately. Can I buy upgrades? No. Or? So we won't have power-based microtransactions. Two thumbs if up for that. Yeah. If we even have microtransactions, which I don't think we will. Yeah. Like we're not, we're not big fans of microtransactions. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys are. <laughs> Personally, myself, I don't like it. I don't like pay, pay to win. I like to evolve. I like to start off as a noob and then progress to, you know, elite god maybe one day. I don't want to start as an elite god and not know how to walk. <laughs> so, but, you know, I, that's a question that I always tread carefully because I don't want to make you guys look bad if you do say it, sell that. But, you know, some people like that. But, uh, so then, that's awesome. And I, I don't know if I interrupted you after uh, that. No. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, I don't know if there's anything we've missed. Anything that that you love about this game that maybe we didn't cover? Well, so at the studio, we're all, uh, we've all played a lot of survival games. Um, we have our issues with survival games. And so kind of the reason we're making this is because we wanted to come together to, I guess, fix a lot of problems that we see. Awesome. Um, and me personally, especially, like have a, a big issue with just the new player experience. Like you, you spawn, you're naked, and you just die. Right. Like for whatever reason. Get snipers right. everywhere. Right. And so we're, we're we're taking a lot of steps to, I guess, help new players get into the genre. While at the same time, keeping a lot of the hardcore elements kind of, I guess, gated uh, uh, for, you know, people who play survival games all the time will have something uh, to enjoy. Right? That's awesome. Um, and so for me personally, my, my favorite thing that we're doing is just all of the quality of life improvements over other survival games that we're adding to our game. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've been in that situation that I just started a new game. Man, this is awesome. Oh, <laughs> and mind you, some people, like, I'll keep playing because I know eventually I'm going to get past that. Some people just say, oh, screw this, forget it. You know, and that's awesome that you want to give people the, you know, you give that little shielded area, that little my space. Yep. And, and, you know, to allow people to get better, to experience the game before somebody that's experienced the game a week before or a month before just ruins their experience. Absolutely. So that, that's, that's awesome. Yep. So, uh, I don't know, I, I know we've covered a lot and I'm sure there's a ton more. Yep. Um, hopefully soon I'll be able to play this game and share a lot of streaming for you guys. Certainly soon. And uh, then we'll see where it goes from there. Yep. So we're uh, uh, 
uh, launching a kind of closed public alpha very soon. Uh, you can sign up on our website uh, at frostkeep.com. Um, and we will hopefully be launching into early access later this year. Very cool. All right, guys, keep your eyes on it. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more on Dragon Blogger on it. And uh, check out Frost Keep Studio, sign up for it. And, uh, well, anyway, thank Thanks. you so much for this. Thank you. Um, it'll be out hopefully very soon on Dragon Blogger's YouTube site. And, uh, well, we'll see where it goes from there. All right. Cool. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. Disclaimer, this product was provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. For more information, visit bit.ly slash dbdisclose. To have your product or brand showcased on Dragon Blogger, visit bit.ly slash review my product. Thank you for watching.